Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to your 24th PSD to WordPress tutorial and in this video we're going to go through the search template. Alright then guys, so in the last tutorial we made this page, the archive.php, which displays the pages for things like the November link or the category links, whichever archive we land on it's going to look something like this, right? However, if we search for something on the website, let's just say hello because hello world, then the design is a lot different at the minute. And that's because the search results page is not an archive page. It doesn't use the archive.php template. It uses a template called search.php. And that's the template we're gonna concentrate on this tutorial so we can get this looking a lot better. All right, so I've got it open right here in brackets. And it's very much the same as the other template files, very similar. Um, we get the header, then with the section and the main, then we've got all this bit here, which is outputting the page title dynamically by using these WordPress functions. Uh, then we've got the loop, which is outputting all the different uh, content for the different search results. And it uses this template part, content and search, which we know is this. And this is outputting a load of different dynamic information as well, uh, like when it was posted and the excerpt and the footer of the uh, entry, all that kind of stuff. We don't need to worry about these functions. All you need to know is that they're doing their job. They're outputting what we want for um, the search page, okay? Just little, little bits of information about those posts. So we don't need to do much with this at all because that's just the information. Uh, but we are gonna go back into this search.php page and we're just gonna add in a couple of divs the wrapper, and we're gonna move that sidebar over to the right as well, just to match the other uh, post pages that we've done, right? And uh, by the way, all of these functions, like, um, let me go in here again, content search, all these different things, um, if you come across one, you wanna know what that does, all you have to do is either copy and paste this into Google and it'll come up, or just go on the WordPress Codex website and look for this function, and it's gonna tell you what it does, okay? And then you can use it wherever you like in your template files. So I'll leave a link, by the way, to that codex down below, just in case you wanna go off and check these, because I know I've been talking about all these different functions and that we don't need to change them. Um, however, you know, I'm not gonna go into depth about what they all do in this tutorial. There's far too many of them. So I will leave that link down below. You can go ahead and read about them. I am gonna go over the important ones, and I've already gone over a few so far. Um, so anyway, let's go back to this search.php. We've got all the loop here outputting the posts, right? Then we've got the header. We just need to contain all this in a div so we can put it on the left, right? And remember that div is an ID of post content. So what I'm gonna do is first of all do our wrapper. So I'll say div ID, oh no ID, div class equals wrapper. Just like that and then I'll take the end div and I'll paste it down here at the bottom. Okay, and then I'm gonna do another div called post content. This is an ID. I remember we already made this ID in the previous template files, so we don't need to restyle any of this. I'm just reusing the same one. Uh, we'll end that here. Okay, and then right about here, I'm gonna do the div with an ID of sidebar because we're going to put our sidebar here and we're going to float the sidebar to the right. All this stuff is going to be floated to the left. Um, and let's grab this dynamic sidebar PHP function and drop it in there so that all the sidebar stuff is going to appear within this div. All right, so let's save that now and take a look at it in a browser once again. Let's refresh. All right, and this is looking a lot better, much like our archive page now. So all the search results are gonna go there. If I type something here which doesn't make sense, uh, like yum yum or whatever, then this is gonna res um, return this little search form here again and say that nothing has been matched, all right? So that looks good as well. So very much like the archive pages, uh, hello. So this is the archive page and this is the search results page, so very similar. So we've got that uh, kind of continuity through the website. 
Alright then gang, so we also wanted to show you this 404.php file and this is the template file which gets loaded up when you visit a URL on your website that doesn't exist. Alright, so say we go to the home page and then we say forward slash uh, give me me or something stupid like that. Then we know that page doesn't exist, we're going to get this 404 page instead and the 404.php template file is what renders this. Okay, so let's take a look at that right now. First of all, I just want to skew that over here so we can go through it step by step. And I'm going to show you what's in this file. So first of all, we've got the header at the top, standard. Then we've got this div in the main. Oops, let's get that back up. And then down here, we've got the page title, which is here. And we've got this little bit of page content, which is this sentence. Then we've got this little search form function. And in WordPress, that's really useful. So whenever you want to use WordPress's inbuilt search form functionality. You don't have to write a new form out in your HTML or anything like that. You just write this simple function, get search form, and that's going to place this thing right there for you. Then we can go in the CSS and we can style this baby up however we want. So that's really cool. Then below that, it's going to grab the widget. And this is another function. It's going to grab a widget from the back end of WordPress. And we'll talk about widgets later. But in this instant, it's going to get the recent posts and display those there. We've only got one at the minute. That's Hello World. Underneath that, we're going to do a quick check to see if we've got categories in our blog. And what this is doing is going to show us a list of all the categories if the widget has multiple categories, right? So it's only going to show them if you have them. And down here is where we actually show the categories. This function down here is called WP list categories, right? And whenever we use that function, it's going to list the categories in our WordPress setup for us on that page. Okay, now it's got a few different properties in here. It passes through an array into the function. You don't have to worry too much about the code, uh, but know that it passes through a few different properties, all right? And I wanted to show you on the WordPress codex what these things do. So um, at the WordPress codex and it's looking at these WP list categories functions and it says here it displays a list of categories as links. So that's what this is doing. And if we go down here, this is how we use it, WP list categories. And we pass through this args variable. And this args variable is just an array, much like we've got here. We've not passed all of these properties through to this array, just a few of them. Uh, but we can pass through as many as we like. And the parameters or properties are down here. Okay, so if you don't know what one of these things means or you want to insert some new ones, you can take a look at this to see which things do what. Okay, so the first one we've got is order by, which is here. And that determines how we're going to order the categories. So if we've got five categories, how we're going to order them. And you can pass through any things here. Uh, it says here, sort categories alphabetically by ID, by the count. And these are the values we can pass in. We're ordering in by the count. So the ones with the most counts are going to be at the top. And that's because of this thing here, order. So if we go down to order, it can be ASC or DESC. Now this stands for descending, this stands for ascending. Descending means it's going to show the ones with the most uh, posts at the top. Ascending means that it would start with the ones with the least posts and go up. All right. So we're doing it by count and it's going to be descending. So this show count down here is this one. And this toggles the display of the current count of posts in each category. So say we want to show how many uh, posts we've got in the meet category. We put a little brackets next to it and it'll say five. Right. So that's one meaning that this is true. OK, so one second. You can see here if we pass one through to this, it means true. If we pass zero, it means false. So we're saying true. We want to show how many posts are in that particular category in brackets. Right. Next one is this title LI, which is down here somewhere. There it is. And here it says we can set the title and style of the outer list item. Defaults to categories if present but empty, which is what we are. So it's going to default the title of this list above the list itself. It's going to default to categories. But we can specify our own one there if we wanted to. All right. The next one is number, which is here. And it says it sets the categories number of categories to display. So we're going to show 10 categories. That's all this is. All right, so let's go further down in this page. I hope you understand that a little bit better now. Um, after that, we've got the end if. Then we've got the archive content itself. Um, try looking in the monthly archives. Then it's going to put forward another widget, which is the archive widget. And it's going to have a drop down menu for that. So that thing is 
this right here. All right, and then after that, we've got the tag cloud. Currently, there's none there because we don't have any tags going on in our WordPress setup, but if we had some, then it would show them there. All right, so that's another widget as well. Like I said, we'll talk about those widgets a little bit later on when we cover widgets. So that is what the 404 page is doing. That's how it's outputting all that information. Now, it currently looks a little bit ugly. We want all this stuff in the middle instead of way over to the left. So all we really need to do is add in that wrapper. So I'm going to do that right about here. I'm going to say div id equals wrapper. And I'll take that closing tag and I'll just pop it right at the bottom of the content. Is it going to be after the main? It's before the main. And is it before the section? No, it's after the section. Okay, round about there, just like that. We'll save it and view this in a browser once more. Give it a minute, and it still doesn't work. Perfect. Why is that? That's because we've used an ID and not class. All right, because in the CSS, we've used a class to style that wrapper, not an ID. So let's view this one more time, and boom, that is done. Okay, so that's what happens if your uh, users visit a page that is not on your website. If you wanted to, you could put a funky banner here. A lot of companies do that with some cool cartoons saying you've made a mistake. You can style this how you want. You can just right click and inspect the elements to find out which classes and IDs they're using. For example, this widget title um, or the search, uh, which is a class of search form. You can style this how you want by finding out the classes and IDs right here. And what I normally do is just go into sources, find the style, and I just pop the CSS here. Copy and paste it all like that. Control A, Control C, and then pop it right back in the style.css here. Paste it in there. All right. So that is the search page covered and the 404 page covered. It's been a bit of a lengthy tutorial, but I hope these are uh, more obvious to you now and what they do. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to drop a comment down below. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and I'll see you in that very next video.